Here's the boat now, making some advances on it. But we need to go inside now and talk about the subject. Did Jesus give power to Peter and the Pope and churches and pastors the power to forgive sins, retain sins? Do you have to go through the church in order to get to heaven? I don't think so. We're going to look at that in the Bible. Let's go inside. Okay, here we are again. I'm looking forward to this one. Can the church keep you out of heaven? There are people who say they can. In fact, most churches say that they're the only way and they can let you in or keep you out. Well, what about that? Who has the keys to the kingdom? Very interesting subject. Let's open the Bible and see what it has to say. Based on this passage, Matthew 16, 18, I say unto thee, Jesus says, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I'll give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So the Roman Catholic Church has claimed for 1,500 years that they have the power on earth through the Pope to bind your sins or loose your sins, to let you into heaven or to excommunicate you and keep you out. There are hundreds of thousands, millions of people in America right now and around the world who believe that the Pope has the power to keep them out of heaven or to let them in. I'm not kidding you. I know this sounds ridiculous, especially some of you that are totally unchurched. Uh, or maybe you've heard it before, and that's why you're unchurched, and I don't blame you. Uh, that can get pretty crazy. So who has the keys to the kingdom of heaven? I guess you know if you've watched the other three that we're talking about the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. And if you don't know those differences, you're going to end up with some very strange, weird doctrine that's worth rejecting. So who has the keys to the kingdom of heaven? Well, Jehovah's Witnesses have their church buildings are named Kingdom Hall. Why? Because they think they have the keys to get you into heaven or to keep you out. So uh, can you imagine uh, <laughs> Can you imagine that being the door to heaven? Uh, some people believe that. And then there's the Mormons, Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints, Mormonites, uh, actually Joseph Smithites. And uh, they believe that they are the way to heaven. And if you enter in, you get up to heaven by going through the church. And uh, they claim that Joseph Smith is the prophet succeeding Jesus Christ. Crazy stuff, right? And then there's the Church of Christ, a regular old uh, evangelical so-called denomination. And they teach that you have to join the Church of Christ to go to heaven, be baptized in their waters to wash away your sins. I wouldn't want that water on my organic garden, would you? And so then there's the Roman Catholic Church who claims that they have the keys to the kingdom, and that's the most infamous of all. Now, this is what the Roman Catholic Church actually says, Society of St. Pius X. Quote, no, I didn't make this up. This is official Catholic statement. Catholic priests are given the incredible role and power to act in the person of Jesus Christ. They participate in his priesthood and hence in his mediation. A mediation is someone who stands between two parties and reconcile, reconciles them. Now, we understand Jesus Christ, our mediator. The Catholic Church teaches that the Pope is a mediator. You you want to get to God, you got to go through him. Uh, the highest function is performed at Mass where they offer to God on behalf of all mankind the body and blood of Jesus Christ. There is, in fact, no greater thing that a man can do than this, to be the instrument of a perfect mediation between man and God. So they believe that the Pope has the keys to let people in, and when he turns the physical bread and physical wine into the literal body and blood of Jesus Christ, and the supplicants come and eat and drink, eat in this case, then they are saved. They're forgiven. They get to go to heaven. Unless the Catholic Church finds fault with them and the Pope excommunicates them, then they go to hell. Now, you know, if, if you made this religion up today, if you came up with this kind of nonsense, it would not be taken seriously 
It's only the fact that people are born into it and it's traditional. Uh, what kind of idiot <laughs> would, would join something like that and believe that this guy right here who believes that queers can go to heaven as queers, that you should bless their marriages if you're one of those mediators between God and man, and put the sanctity of God upon a queer union, a sodomite union, that that person has the power to forgive your sins? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Let's get rid of that. Now here's the passage that they use again. Matthew 16, I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, the gates of hell will not prevail against it, and I'll give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And what, whatsoever thou shalt bound on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Do you notice what kind of keys he gave Peter? Uh, actually, it was the whole disciples, but let's, let's, I'll go along with, for the sake of argument, because it doesn't matter that it was Peter. It's actually all the apostles, but go along with that. Okay, I'll grant that for the moment. He didn't give him the keys to the kingdom of God. He gave him the keys to the kingdom of heaven. The kingdoms are not the same. This book goes into great detail to make that point. Now, evangelicals have known this for many years. There's very few today that know it. It's kind of a forgotten doctrine, but 50, 60 years ago, people well understood the difference between the kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven. Now, they all, all they know is, is uh, well, I won't say, but... Uh, that little book goes into the details on it. Now, I'll give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bound on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou loose on earth be loosed in heaven. Peter and the apostles had the power after Jesus died to open up the earth to the kingdom of heaven, to bring the will of God to the earth and establish an earthly kingdom under Judaism, under Israel. They had that power. Now, that power was rejected by the Jews, and the kingdom of heaven did not come. Now it's in the hands of satanic forces. Now the kingdom of heaven belongs to the devil and his kind. So he didn't give him the keys to the kingdom of God. He gave him the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Now, the Catholic Church firmly believes this. They teach their children to say the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And they think that that kingdom can be brought in by force. Matthew 11, and from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. In the 11th, 12th, 13th century, the Roman Catholic Church, uh, way back in the even 10th, 11th century, participated in what was called the Crusades. That's where the violent took the kingdom by force. They went to Palestine, they went to Jerusalem, and they killed anybody that got in their way. On one occasion, they killed over 30,000 Jews in Europe on their way to the Holy Land to bring in the kingdom by violence because they believed they had the key. And if you didn't repent and join the Catholic Church, you were subject to death. Now that goes right on up into the 1500s. You will read about the Catholic Church killing people for printing the Bible in their own language. Why? Because they had the keys to the kingdom. It was theirs to bind and loose. That's what they believe. Now, I know that's nonsense. Now here is a portion of the scriptures of the Roman Catholic Church, and they in it celebrate the crusaders binding up the non-Catholics and killing them because they were bringing in the kingdom. And that was called a revival back in those days. Now, what the Bible actually says, said, Jesus said, Peace be unto you, my Father has sent me, so send I you. And when he had said thus, he breathed on them, said, Receive the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted. Whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. So the Pope believes that based on this scripture, he has the power to re receive sin or forgive sins or retain sins. Now, at that time, when Jesus gave the kingdom of heaven to the apostles, they did have the power upon earth to remit sins by taking that message to people or not taking the message, then the sins were retained. 
So even in a sense, you and I today have that power. A sinner comes into our life. We have the power to give him the gospel and get him to heaven or keep our mouth shut and he does not go to heaven. So who now has the key to the kingdom? Revelation 3, he that hath the key of David, talking about Jesus. He that openeth and no man shutteth, he shutteth and no man openeth. The key of the kingdom of David. I know thou works, behold, I've set before thee an open door. No man can shut it for the kingdom has a little strength. Now that's not the kingdom of God. That's not the kingdom of heaven. That's the kingdom of David. This book talks about eight kingdoms. You got to get those clear the different kingdoms clear if you can understand what the Bible's talking about. Go back to John 5. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. That's how you get to heaven. <laughs> Hear and believe about the Jesus Christ. Shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. You know, when I, when I uh, got my ticket to heaven, when I got my sins remitted, there was no one involved in doing that for me. There was no church involved in that. There was no water baptism. There was no sprinkling or Eucharist or sacrament or anything else. I simply, as a 13-year-old boy, believed that Jesus Christ died for my sins, put them away forever. And upon believing that, the Holy Spirit came into me, and I knew I was a different boy. When I went to school, I knew I was different from everyone else. I had love, I had compassion, I didn't want to fornicate, I didn't want to do pornography, I didn't want to lie, I didn't want to cheat. I wanted to be kind to everyone. Why? Because I had Jesus Christ living inside of me. He's the one that makes the difference. You should know from history that church, the, the Roman Catholic Church does not make a difference, does not make people righteous and holy. It makes people try to be, makes hypocrites out of them. Many of them become fornicators, child molesters but it does not make Christians out of them. So if you've had that as an impediment to you coming to Christ because you see what's in the church, say the church is full of hypocrites, you don't know the half of it. There's a whole lot more hypocrites in the church than you can ever imagine because I've been in it all my life, all kinds of churches. And the, uh, actually that's a recommendation for the church. Why? Because it says sinners know the way to heaven is to come to Jesus Christ and the only thing they know about him is the church. So they go to church, and when they're not righteous, they love the idea of righteousness so much they pretend to be. So that's high recommendation for true righteousness. Okay, finally, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth? For there's one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So contrary to what we just read, by the Roman Catholics, there is only one mediator between God and man, that's Jesus Christ. And he is not mediated by anyone. He mediates himself to us by his spirit. They that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth, not through some church institution. So I have this book here that I spent over 30 years writing, Eight Kingdoms, Kingdom of God and the Kingdom of Heaven. And it goes into great detail. That's one page uh, out of it. Uh, you see how I've compared uh, the different gospel counts and gave, give a lot of detail. And here's another way of looking at them where I give characteristics of the different kingdoms and I compare the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Uh, and so this, this is, I hate to say exhaustive, but it's about exhaustive uh, in terms of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. I have people tell me all the time, uh, look, look at the look at the comments under under my site here. People are reading this, and for the first time, the Bible is making sense all the way through. So get that, and don't forget my new book, uh, Faith More Than You Think. It is uh, it's got a powerful, impacting message that's going to surprise you. There's going to be some things many of you disagree with, but by the time you get through with it, I think you'll agree. So get that book and, and read it as well. All right. Uh, by the way, I don't make anything off these. I don't make a dime. Not a dime. So I've got to go out and work on my jet boat uh, because I need that thing floating by springtime when the fishing season gets right. Okay. Okay.